Blade of the Immortal is Japanese director Takashi Miike's newest film. So far I've seen Ichi the Killer, Audition, Yatta Man, Zebra Man, Zebra Man 2, Aizo and Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. So that's 7 movies. Normally that would give you at least somewhat of a decent insight into a director's work. Well... Yeah, that's right. Blade of the Immortal is film number 100 by Takashi Miike. That's just totally insane. Even a workaholic like Woody Allen has just crossed a 50 movie mark. So in celebration of that epic number, Miike is giving us a crazy blood splattering limb flying samurai action film that's really quite impressive. With just 7 movies that I've seen of his, Mika was always very hit and miss for me. I really like one and then I'm almost hating the next. At the Slash Film Festival here in Vienna where I've seen both, Blade of the Immortal and Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, it wasn't any different. I thought Jojo was one of the worst movies I've seen all year. Terrible introduction to a beloved manga universe. Lackluster, boring and with no engaging story or fleshed out characters at all. But fortunately, Blade of the Immortal, which is also an adaptation of a manga, was a real delight. It starts in a beautiful black and white fashion, introducing us to Manji, a highly skilled samurai who is just about to cut through dozens of bandits with his mighty blade in order to protect a young woman. This sets the stage for the rest of the movie, both in terms of style and sheer coolness and also in its theme of that lone warrior who is protecting a young girl. But Manji is no ordinary samurai. He becomes cursed with immortality and isn't able to die, no matter how bad the injury, the blood worms he hosts on his body are keeping him alive. I'm not familiar with the manga at all, so I can't say much about the actual adaptation, but I attended the screening with a friend who has read at least parts of it. He wasn't as thrilled as I was and like they normally do, the movie version picks some elements and stories while ignoring others. But one of the highlights of the manga is the way it is drawn. Just look at these pictures. But as long as you're not doing something in the vein of 300 or Sin City, it's hard to translate a particular art style into a live action adaptation. But reviewing just the movie as it is, I have to say that it was one of this year's most gorgeous looking things. The whole production is rich in every way. Costumes, set design, colors, lightning. It's a movie you want to get lost in while watching. Almost all scenes are shot on location and the nature as well as those old houses transport this nostalgic samurai flavor. But Blade of the Immortal is not a straight historic movie and not just because of the supernatural element in it, but also because it has some modern aspects as well when it comes to the outfits or hairstyles of the many adversaries our hero has to overcome. One of the highlights are the many different weapons that are used in a very graphical fashion. This is rated R for a reason, meaning bloody violence and carnage throughout. The body count is out of the world and for most of the time it's both fascinating and joyful to watch. But it can also get a little bit tiresome and with 140 minutes it felt definitely too long. The story and the different encounters has an episodic feeling to it and it's neither that deep or emotional. Manji, played by Takuya Kimura, who, by the way, voiced Hauru in Howl's Moving Castle, and the young girl Rin, played by Hana Tsukizaki, form a nice pair and there are some very warm moments of bonding. But the whole film is also so over-the-top cool that it doesn't allow for a strong emotional impact, I thought. And this is something you really should know before checking it out. Blade of the Immortal is very cool. Some might say it's quite full of itself. I thought it was legit for most parts, because it has a very funny side to it as well. But the thing that bothered me, and it would have bothered me even more so, if this wasn't such a beautiful film to look at, was the cinematography during the many fight scenes. Apart from some instances, it was way too close for my taste. You could understand what was happening, but it was almost impossible to make out all the little details of each fight or the overall craftsmanship of the choreography and carnage. But in the end I thought Blade of the Immortal was a good samurai action film. A little bit long and too episodic, but also with a lot of flavor and charismatic performances. In German I'd say, Blade of the Immortal bietet ein wunderschönes Samurai Setting und jede Menge blutiger Kämpfe mit einem Schuss Komik und jeder Menge Coolness. 
I give Blade of the Immortal 7 out of 10. It's more like 7.2, but I don't do that. Alright, that's it like always, comment below and let me know what you think about Blade of the Immortal. And since there are so many movies to pick from, let me also know what is your favorite movie by Takashi Miike. You can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, simply at The Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.